Hi everyone. All right, so for today's tutorial, I'm basically going to be showing you how to create this bandana completely from scratch. Now, this entire workflow is going to be a little bit messy, uh, so I'd say it's ideal for concept purposes because we're basically taking a high poly object, creating some UVs for that high poly object, and then basically applying some quick textures within Photoshop so that we can uh, texture this object and see it textured uh, from multiple angles. So, we're going to be using Marvelous Designer to create our garment, and then we're going to export it out of MD take it into ZBrush, uh, detail it a little bit further and then we're going to use the UV master within ZBrush to create some quick UVs. I'm then going to take it over to 3D Studio Max, adjust those UVs and then we'll take it to Photoshop and create some quick textures. Now this entire process, like I said, is going to be messy uh, so you'll see that I wouldn't say this is completely ideal for doing UV work but it, it can come in handy if you're just doing some quick concept work and you want your garments to have some kind of texture applied to it. So, with all of that said, I hope you guys learned something useful from this tutorial. And without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so for this tutorial, I'm actually going to be using a custom character. I'll be using a Daz character within Marvelous Designer. So, if, you cr if you've created something in ZBrush, uh, then you can bring that in and create this bandana. Uh, you can do that as well with the standard... Uh, Marvelous Design Avatars, but I, I decided that I actually want to use a, a Daz character. So I'll go File, Import OBJ, and just go and find the female, and import her into Marvelous Designer. So I'm going to load as an avatar, and I'll click on Auto Scale. Click on OK. Let that load in. And you guys can see I'm using Marvelous Designer 6, but uh, I'm not going to be using any of the new tools. So if you're using an earlier version, uh, you guys don't have to worry. You can still follow along. Right, so I got my character in here, and uh, yeah, let's get started, guys. All right, so um, let's create the shape for our bandana. So I'm going to just create a uh, rectangle here, over here. So I'll just draw this into this particular section over here. Uh, and one thing uh, to mention uh, with these dash characters, you'll notice that they don't have arrangement points and bounding volumes. The standard ones won't have this applied to them. Uh, but if you check my previous tutorial, or if you just go through my video archive, I've actually provided a download link uh, to these custom arrangement points and bounding volumes for this uh, the DAS Genesis uh, 3 female and males. So if you're using Marvelous Designer 6 and you're also using DAS, then you guys can have these bounding volumes. Uh, but in that tutorial as well, uh, I explain how to create this stuff. Now, we won't really be using that uh, too much in this tutorial uh, so you guys don't have to worry uh, but actually I will be referencing one of these points but you guys can just rotate this garment on the side of the face uh, to complete this action as well but um, just for speed I'm just gonna reference this point over here and drag that garment there a little bit later so it's not a big deal guys you don't need this uh, but I thought I'll just mention that anyway alright so I'm just gonna hide that and yeah let's create our bandana shape so I'm just going to select these two points, hold on control, uh, shift to select bo uh, both points, hold on control and just drag this out a bit. And then I'm going to select this bottom point, drag this up. And again, I'm holding down control so that it's constrained to this particular line. And I'm not moving it around freely like that. Okay, and then I'm going to, I'm going to add a curve point. So I'll add one over here. And I'll add another one down here. And let's see, I'm going to just angle this a little bit. Now you can see it's a little bit bigger than the face over here, but we don't have to worry about that too much right now. We'll adjust that a little bit later. And then again, I'm going to add, just add a little bit of a curve point. Actually, I'll add a curve point over here. And a little bit of a curve point there. And I'll add a point over there as well now. I'll just come back and let me just adjust, just adjust that point a little bit. So you can see there's just a little bit of roundness here on this corner. So this is basically going to be our shape for our bandana. Actually, let me adjust that a little bit. This is going to be our shape for our bandana. Uh, really is simple to create. Uh, now we're probably going to have to do some adjustments here. I'll see 
how it actually looks once we apply it uh, to the avatar over here. Just keep adjusting. Okay. And then you can see I went to the transform pattern and now I'm just putting it into position over here. And again, I can adjust uh, how long we want this bandana to be. So it's not a big deal. And then I'm going to right click and go to clone a symmet uh, symmetric pattern. Now, I think in earlier versions, if you right click, there's an option to clone as uh, symmetry or I'm not 100% sure, but you'll see something related to symmetry in earlier versions. So just right click and clone a symmetric pattern. And I'm going to place this this side. As you can see, I've got two over here. And then I'm going to activate the bounding volumes. Now, for those of you not using bounding volumes, like I said, it's not a big deal. You can just take uh, this shape and just rotate it. So you want to put it on this side of the face and then you want to take this garment and put it on the other side of the face. But like I said, I want some speed. So I'm just going to reference these points really quickly. Uh, just bring this down a bit. Bring that one down. Okay, and now we can start sewing. So I'm going to go into segment sewing. We'll sew this together. And we'll sew the back. And that's it, guys. So actually, let me move this down some more. All right, so when I actually simulate this, When I click on simulate, all we have to do is just further adjust this garment. Now you can see it's probably, I don't know if it's a little bit too tight. Uh, it actually might be a little bit too small for our character over here. So we're going to have to do, and we're definitely going to have to do some adjusting here. So let's see. Okay. Let's just increase the size of this. So I'm going to go to uh, transform, select both of these, click on this middle button over here, and this is going to do a uniform scale and just scale this up a bit. Click on simulate again. And now drag that up. And again, our particle distance is not too high. It's only on 20. That's why we're not seeing uh, a lot of these awesome wrinkles and folds on here. But uh, this is the particle distance that I would say is probably the ideal uh, particle distance to work at so that you don't experience too much lag. So now uh, you can see we've got our shape of our bandana over here. It really was that simple to create. Uh, but there's a couple of things that we're still going to change over here. Uh, I don't like how round it is at the bottom, so we're just going to uh, just sharpen this a little bit over here and then just continue adjusting and placing our bandana until we're happy with it. All right. All right, guys, so let's continue modifying the shape of our bandana. Uh, now, certain stuff is um, actually going to be a lot easier to adjust in ZBrush, uh, but you just want to make sure that you get the stuff into position so that uh, the folds that you're going to get on your garment are going to be a little bit more accurate so that you don't have to do too much work in ZBrush. You'll see like in sections like this, uh, I'm just going to drag this up a little bit because I want this to be uh, quite flush with the, this nose region over here. And again, sometimes this garment uh, simulation can give you a little bit of a hard time, uh, but it's just all about dragging, dragging the garment, getting it into a position that you're happy with. So over there, I can see that it's a little bit more flush with the nose. And then you can see over here, this is actually intersecting with the ear. And this back piece is actually quite sharp. So let's just adjust that. So I will go into edit. Uh, sorry, I'll go into uh, trans. <laughs> what am I saying? Damn it. I will go into the edit pattern and just drag down these points a little bit. So holding down control, so it's constrained, drag it down a bit. And now you can see it's no longer intersecting with that ear. You should just drag it up just a little bit. 
okay click simulate again now it falls off the nose region so, so like I said guys uh, simulation can be a little bit annoying uh, you just have to play around with it until uh, you get something that works and then uh, but don't spend too much time doing this because like I said certain stuff's just a lot easier to adjust uh, in ZBrush and now that back section over here I'm just gonna round this off just a little bit so I'll go to the edit curvature go back to this line and just click and drag Add a little bit of roundness there and a little bit of roundness to the top as well actually wait, we don't have to add any roundness there just a little bit of roundness here if I click back on simulate it's still slightly pointy okay you know what actually we will adjust that in ZBrush uh, just to save us a little bit a little bit of time it's like I said uh, we'll only do so much in Marvelous Designer so that we're not just uh, clicking and dragging the simulation around the whole time because that can get quite annoying and like I said there's a lot of things that are just easier to do in ZBrush so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep adjusting this until I feel like it fits right and uh, one more thing you can see like I said this is so annoying now I could adjust the skin like if I click on the avatar and I go to scene and I try and find my avatar over here uh, there's a thing called skin offset so if I decrease the skin offset I think this will be more flush against the skin yeah it's a little bit more tighter now so Since it's slightly more tight, I think I think it will fall down as much. But then again, skin offset is only related to how far the garment is actually offset uh, from the avatar itself. So this actually doesn't relate too much to uh, how tight this is going to be on our avatar. So I'm just having a little bit of time there, guys. I'm probably gonna jump a little bit forward so that you guys don't see me adjusting this the whole time so it's a little bit annoying but I'm just gonna get in get it into a position that I'm happy with and you guys should do the same and then we'll continue from there but uh, one more thing this area over here is a little bit rounded off so I'm just gonna make that a little bit sharper so to do that I'll go back into edit curvature click here at the bottom left click and just drag this in a bit and you'll see that it makes this bottom section a little bit sharper and for me personally, I think that looks a little bit uh, more aesthetically pleasing. And again, areas like this, we'll just adjust it in ZBrush. All right, guys, so I'll show you how to adjust the shape here. I'm just going to go ahead, uh, skip a little bit forward, and just adjust this garment on the face until I'm happy with it. All right. All right, guys, so I've got the garment into a position that I'm a little bit more happier with. Uh, just with the playing around a bit, moving this into certain locations and getting these different folds. Uh, I also took uh, this part of the uh, pattern over here and I moved it back a little bit so that it was just a little bit more tighter against the face and I added just a little bit of uh, roundness over here so I went to edit curvature and pulled this down a little bit just to add a little bit more roundness uh, to this section. So I'm, I'm happy with this and while my garment still simulated uh, what I'm basically going to do is I'll get the transform pattern tool and I'm going to hold down shift and select both of these and my particle distance uh, the lower the number the more uh, detail we're actually going to see on our wrinkles and folds over here so uh, I'm, I'm actually going to put mine on five just so I get some really nice detail now this is going to take a little bit of time uh, to basically compute and then you'll see that uh, it's applied that five particle distance but I have to click on simulate again uh, to get all of those folds to basically be applied and now you can see it looks a lot nicer uh, these wrinkles are a lot more visible uh, we can even see really small details so I can see some details of uh, our cheek here and the chin a little bit of that nose detail and even a little bit of the lips underneath the garment so putting that number fairly low is going to give you uh, a lot more detail to your garment uh, that also means the polygon count is going to be a lot higher but that doesn't really matter like I said we're creating a high a high poly 
a garment over here. Now you can see over here this is just basically intersecting with the bra. I'm just going to pull it up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, like I said guys, I play around with a particle distance, put it on 5 and uh, see what type of wrinkles you get and then we'll move on from here and export this out of Marvelous Designer and take it over to ZBrush. All right. Okay guys, so uh, I actually went back and I just removed the brow of my avatar uh, because this garment was actually starting to, I don't know, it was just causing errors, it was intersecting with that brow and it was really annoying. Uh, but anyway, uh, I ended up going back into the pattern and putting this forward again because I actually didn't like how tight it was against the face. Uh, like I mentioned uh, previously, we could see all of that detail, like even the lips and more detail with the nose, but... Uh, I just felt that it was a bit too tight on the face, so I just adjusted that side uh, slightly. Uh, it's still on a particle distance of 5, and I think I'm actually happy with everything now. You can see we've got some nice wrinkles over here, some nice folds, and we can just further adjust this in ZBrush. Uh, so I hope you guys have created uh, something similar from watching the tutorial. Let's pull that out a little bit. Hope you guys have created something similar from watching this. And uh, we're now at the end of the tutorial. And I'm going to be showing you how we can export this out and then import it into ZBrush. Right. Right, guys. So once you've got your garment into a position that you're happy with, uh, let's go and export this. So I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'll say OBJ. And I'm just going to go to my folder over here. So Final Files. And I'll just make a folder here called Bandana. And I'll say bandana plus female. So I'm going to export both of them out. Click on save. And then um, I'm going to make sure that it's a single object. Uh, make sure unweld is selected and I want it to be thin as well. And then uh, I'm exporting in uh, millimeters, which is the default format. And then uh, save the texture files. Yeah, I'll save the texture files. Uh, diffuse color book combined. Can select that as well uh, but this is uh, this is just related to the DAS model that I have over here so if you're not using a DAS model you don't have to really worry about this too much I want to select all patterns select all avatars uh, unified UV coordinates and that should be good and then click on OK let that export out and then uh, let's go ahead open up ZBrush and import this into ZBrush alright guys so we're in ZBrush I'm gonna go ahead to import Go and find that garment, import the garment with the avatar and just drag that out into the canvas. Go to edit, hide the light box and just use this basic material. Right, so if I click on polygroups, so this could do it, um, this could happen to your custom ZBrush character as well if you've imported it, uh, imported it into Marvelous uh, Designer and then exported it out of MD. Uh, sometimes you lose your polygroups, well they're not really lost, um, you just can't see them. All you have to do is go to polygroups and go to auto groups and then we'll get those polygroups uh, back on our model and we'll be able to see the polygroups on our garment as well. So that's exactly what we're going to be working on. So I'm going to hold down control, left click just to hide. Uh, you'll see that it isolates this piece. I'm going to control and left click again to hide that. Control left click to hide and then I'm going to go to split hidden So subtool split and then here's the option over here, split hidden. And you can see that puts it, uh, it's its own object over now, uh, its own object right now. And then I'm going to go to solo because we just want to be working on uh, this garment. And you'll notice that this garment's actually not closed, right? It looks really weird. Uh, so we're actually going to fix that. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to just group visible to make this one poly group. And then I'm going to go to Geometry, Edge Loop, and we're going to add a Group Loops. But I'm going to put this on 1. So 1 loop, and then click on Group Loops. Now you can see that it's applying a Group Loops even over here where the seam is. Uh, but I don't want that. So I'm going to go to Group Visible again. By the way, Group Visible is here in Poly Groups and Group Visible, in case you guys don't know where to find it. And then I'm going to go back to geometry and we're going to add a panel loop. So panel loops is basically going to add thickness to our garment. But we want to make sure the thickness is really small. So 0 0.001. Put the polish on 0. And then click on panel loops. 
and now you can see it's added some more polygroups over there again I want this to just be one single polygroup so again I'll click on group visible and there we go so now we've actually added thickness to our model but we're not done yet because you can see we've got a lot of these uh, it's really triangulated so in order to fix this we're actually going to z-remesh this so I'll go to z-remesher uh, we don't have to change anything here just click on z-remesher and you'll see that we're going to get a much cleaner edge flow right now we've got quads it's no longer triangulated and this is just going to be a lot easier to sculpt on so from here uh, we've basically fixed our garment added some thickness created a better edge flow and then we're just going to subdivide this I think I'll go to subdivision 3 again like I said this is a high poly asset that we're creating here um, and basically from here we can start sculpting on our garment so maybe adding some additional folds and then adding a seam line here so that's what we'll be doing next all right all right guys so from here you have creative freedom uh, obviously the higher the subdivision uh, the more dense this model is going to be and you can see those quads actually helped us again it's going to help us uh, sculpt detail on here a lot more easier uh, but what I'm definitely going to add back into our model is that seam line that goes up here. So I'm just, I'll use Damien as the Damien standard brush. And I'll basically, I'll drag a line up here. Uh, but just so I have more control over how precise this line is going to be, I'll actually go to stroke, lazy mouse, and I'm going to increase the radius over here. So now when I drag can see that it's got like this uh, tail at the back and that's just basically giving me a little bit more accuracy and precision on how I draw out those lines using the Damien standard so I'm just going to add a seam line down the center and then I'm going to turn on symmetry all right because these two sections over here even though this garment's obviously asymmetrical uh, these areas over here where it's falling down uh, basically you can see it's quite symmetrical over there so I'll be able to just use the Damien standard and draw a line that goes up over here I'll draw that right around like I said ZBrush is going to give you that creative freedom uh, that you want with your garment because certain stuff like this is just going to be you can do it in Marvelous Designer but uh, I mean, you can do this so much quicker in ZBrush by adding detail like this onto your mesh. And since this is just going to be a high poly asset and nothing really for games, uh, we can go as high as we want and add as much detail as we want to this garment. So I'm just going to go ahead and refine this. I've showed you guys what I'm going to do over here. And then we'll carry on from there. All right. All right, guys. Now, this is what I was talking earlier about uh, things being done easier in ZBrush. If we just use the move brush, we can actually continue adjusting the shape of our garment here. So if there's certain areas that you want to adjust, like notice in Marvelous Design, if we wanted to move this back, well, we'd have to adjust the pattern quite a bit and then re-simulate. Uh, but in ZBrush, you can just use that move brush, maybe move it a little bit more flush against the model. Uh, but you can see that we've got a lot more control in ZBrush for moving certain areas uh, of the mesh around uh, to complete uh, these certain tasks. So I'm just going to continue doing that until uh, I'm happy with the end result. All right. All right, guys. So I think I'm done with mine. Um, I'm, I'm actually leaving this very simple because I'm going to let the texturing uh, add most of the detail to this garment. Uh, but you guys are free to do whatever you want. Uh, like I said, I'm leaving mine simple like this. And when I said this was going to be a high poly object, I really meant that. This is 136,000. And that's just for a bandana, which is quite ridiculous. But uh, like I said, I'm not really focusing on any low poly. Uh, so this technique could probably be used for creating high poly and creating UVs, maybe for some concept artwork or something. Uh, but anyway, I'm done. Um, you'll see if I zoom in here. It seems like 136,000 is still not enough uh, resolution because there's all these jagged lines. So if I subdivide this one more time, 
which is going to take it to 546,000, which again is crazy for something as simple as a bandana. Uh, but I don't know, I'm just a little bit worried. I'm not sure if uh, maybe in the final render we're actually going to see those jagged edges. So uh, I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to leave it on 136. Thousand. If I start seeing uh, some noticeable jagged edges uh, in the render, then uh, I know that I'll probably just have to come back here and uh, make the subdivision higher, and then draw that dam, uh, draw, uh, use dam sander to draw that seam line back on. Right. But anyway, uh, I'm okay with this. And then from here, what, do, what we want to do is go to Z plugin. Because now we actually go into create our UVs. So uh, maybe some of you guys have never used the UV Master in ZBrush, but it's actually quite useful because it allows you to actually create UV islands uh, according to polygroups. Now, obviously, we've only got a single polygroup over here, so we're going to have to create some polygroups of where we want the UV islands to be, and then we'll unwrap it. So I'm going to select Slice Curve because Slice Curve, if I just I hold on control and shift and I if I drag a curve on here or whatever you'll see that whenever I slice something oh okay you saw over there it said it's comprised of multiple subdivision le levels so I'm actually going to delete lower uh, but slice curve is basically going to do that it creates polygroups for you so you can see well when I'm using the curve whatever's by this black gradient region within the black gradient region uh, that's where it's going to create that polygroup. So I want to create a polygroup here by the seam, just like we had in the beginning when we actually imported this into ZBrush. So I'm going to actually select lasso. Again, I'm holding down Control and Shift to get to this menu and just go in there. And I want lasso because lasso is going to allow me to freely draw on here. And the reason why I'm doing this and not uh, painting a mask and then uh, grouping the mask is because Sometimes the, that can cause jagged edges, uh, but by using slice curve, we get very clean polygroups, right? So I'm just going to start here from the top and just do this freely, but trying to stay as close as possible. Oops, trying to stay as close as possible to the seam line over here. And then I'll drag this way, make sure it's complete, and let go. Let me see the polygroup. Now you can see that wasn't 100% accurate. I wasn't so close to the line over there. So but you guys can see what I'm trying to do over here. Uh, and it made another polygroup over there, but that's not a big problem. I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, let me just redraw this line quickly so that it lines up with the seam. Right, so I just went back, used the slice curve, and made sure it was as close as, uh, to the seam line as possible. And now I want this top section to be uh, have its own polygroup as well. So I'm going to put this on the side. And again, holding down Control, left click, and trying to stay as close as possible to the seam line. So just draw this out. Go up like that. Okay, so you can see that it's created that polygroup. Uh, but these are two separate polygroups, and I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to hide these two pieces. So Control left click hide that, and hide that. Now these are just visible, and then I would click on Group Visible. Now I'm just going to go back and uh, make sure that uh, I try and get this line as close as possible to that seam line. So I'm just going to take a little bit more time and do it a little bit more accurate. Uh, but I've shown you guys how I go about and achieve that. Okay. Right, so I went back and uh, I tried to stay as close as possible to that seam line. You guys are probably going to have two polygroups like this as well, so I want to make sure that's one polygroup. So control, left click, and just hide these two pieces. And then over here, group visible, control, left click in this open space to bring everything back. And there we go, we've got our polygroups created. So that's going to be its own separate texture. And then obviously, splitting it down the middle. Uh, because when we're actually applying the texture, we want it to appear as if there is really a seam over there so that the texture on the cloth has been applied 
a little bit more accurately. All right, so the next step is to use uh, the UV master, which is under Z plugin. So let's do that next. Okay, guys, so as I mentioned earlier, UV master is basically going to create uh, UVs for us according to how these polygroups are set up. So just open up UV master under Z plugin and then you want to make sure polygroups is selected. And uh, that's it because we've done most of the work over here. We created our polygroups and then we just click on unwrap and let it complete that process for us. And then uh, we'll see the result of our uh, unwrap. So I'll just pause this here and wait for the process to complete and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so the process has been completed. It actually didn't take that long, maybe about 40 seconds. Um, so it's done now. So if you want to actually see our unwrapped UVs, we just click on flatten. Uh, actually, let me just go to sub tool so that we can hide this. And there we go, guys. We can actually see our UVs over here. And you can see that wherever we created those polygroups, it unwrapped it. And we've got that strip at the top and these two pieces. And this is actually 3D, so we can move around and view it like this. So that's it, guys. We've actually created UVs for our bandana. It was that simple. Now I'm going to just click on unflatten so everything goes back to normal. Uh, so here's our bandana. Uh, we drew in some seam lines using damn standard. And then we use slice curve uh, to create those polygroups so that we can uh, basically define where uh, these UV islands are going to be for our uh, garment. So that's it. We're actually done now, guys. So the next part, we're going to export this out of ZBrush. And I'm going to import it into 3D Studio Max. But you guys can use any program, Maya, uh, 3D Code, whatever you use for UVs. And I'm basically just going to adjust the arrangement uh, of those uh, UV islands. Uh, and then I'm going to save that out, take it to Photoshop, apply some texture to it and then we'll continue from there all right all right guys so i'm going to save myself a little bit of time i've installed the where is this i've installed a go z for zbrush to 3d studio max uh, but obviously whatever program you're using just go ahead and export this out of here and import it into that program so that you can adjust uh, the uvs uh, that zbrush has created for you so i'm just gonna simply click on go z Click continue and it's going to send it straight over to 3D Studio Max. You can see over there, it's importing it and we've got it in 3D Studio Max. So now I can even go ahead, analyze this. And there we go, we've got our bandana. So I'm going to use 3D Studio Max just to adjust uh, some of the UVs. And this process is going to be really dirty. So if you're a, a traditional 3D artist, you're probably going to be cringing at how messy this process is going to be uh, but for the purpose of this tutorial it actually works anyway i'm going to select my object uh, go into modify you can already see edit polys apply to it and then i'm going to go on the drop down list and go to unwrap uvw open the uv editor and uh, there we go we've got our uvs from zbrush so i'm just going to rearrange these uh, quickly so i'll just double click select this and i want this to be in its own area here at the top. This is going to have its own uh, material applied to it. I'll just adjust, let's adjust the scale of that. Try and cover as much as I can. And then over here, I'm going to make these overlap each other. So let me just bring this here first. Rotate, take this one, rotate, and I'm making them overlap each other because whatever texture we're going to have here is going to be the exact same texture, uh, but I'm going to line up the texture here by the seam. So you'll see what I mean uh, once we actually get to Photoshop. So that that should be fine. So I'm going to select both of these and then increase the scale. Try and make it as large as possible. It's, that, should, that should be fine. OK, 
can just move this up a bit and maybe just increase the scale just a little bit Let's see okay that should be fine all right so I've adjusted my UVs and what I'm basically going to be doing now is going to tools and I'm going to render UVW template uh, let's see uh, let's go for 2048 by 2048 Render target default. I don't have to touch anything else. So I'll go ahead, render the UV template. So we've got over here and it's going to have a alpha. And I can see that this is actually not straight. So hold on, let me just move this a little bit to the side. Okay, and then render UV template. Yeah, that should be fine. Click on save and just save this. I want to make sure that I'm saving it as a PNG so that it's got that transparent background and then click on save and 48 bit alpha channel click OK that should be fine close that and now I want to make sure that I actually save these UVs to this object so uh, what I'm gonna do is hold on I'm just basically going to export this out of 3D Studio Max so once you've created your UVs just go ahead export that Make sure the UVs are applied to it. And uh, so I'll go export and go find my bandana tutorial. Final objects. Save this out as a OBJ. Bandana final. You want to replace? Yes. Uh, flip export materials, create metal library, texture coordinates, normal, smooth groups. That should be fine. And then click on export. Let that export out of 3D Studio Max. And then we'll have those adjusted UVs applied to this object and now we can head over to Photoshop and do some very very quick texturing okay just something to mention guys I think when you're texturing this maybe go for a repeated patterns you see that I went for that more traditional bandana pattern but it can give you a little bit of problems when you're trying to line up uh, the pattern and trying to get it symmetric uh, symmetrical uh, so maybe try and texture with something a little bit uh, less complicated uh, for this process uh, but it's completely up to you guys and I just use this video as an example all right guys so I've dragged my UV template into Photoshop and I just found uh, an image of like these bandana patterns on Google and um, actually immediately I'm going to get rid of the centerpiece over here uh, I don't really like that oops so just get rid of this painting it out quickly okay and then uh, I'm just gonna drag this onto the canvas and uh, these UV island uh, these UV islands are just there um, to give us an indication of where we actually need to place our textures so let's see so I'm gonna try and line up this texture right here by the seam and then we'll actually see how this turns out so uh, I actually have no idea how this is really going to turn out I mean this does give me a general idea of how it's going to look uh, but we'll see how it looks in the final uh, the final uh, render so that's right there by the seam then I'm going to duplicate this like I said guys this process is messy uh, I'd only do this really for concept purposes if I just want some quick UVs applied to a garment or whatever that I've created uh, and that should be down there by the seam as well so now when it's unfolded we'll have this texture all over and then for this piece here at the top I'm going to make it red and just basically draw it a, just a rectangle like that okay all right so we're done and then um, basically what I want to do from here is I want to make sure I hide that UV template and I just want to save this out so this is basically our texture you can see there's our seam over there now is that lined up correctly I'm just gonna move this a little bit to the left
and I'm just referencing these endpoints over here. Okay, so I'll hide that, save this out as JPEG. Here we go, save this out, and then I've also created this a normal map with some lines on it, and these lines are actually going to add some nice texture to our bandana. You'll see once we import the normal and our diffuse map. Uh, and we apply that to our object. This is going to add some really nice detail. So this is an alternative to actually sculpting this in ZBrush. We'll just use a normal map uh, to basically give an indication of some sculpted or these lined surfaces. So it gives it some nice texture. So we're actually done here, guys. So yeah, let's carry on and see how this actually looks. All right, guys. So now we're in Marmoset 2 bag. So let's go ahead and actually import our comment and our avatar into Marmoset 2 bag. So I'm going to go to import model, final objects, I'll import the bandana first. There we go. And then I'm going to import the avatar as well. Now the first thing that I want to do here is just change this background. So I'm going to sky presets and uh, let's maybe select, just select something different for now. Okay, so we've got our character in here. And I'm going to change it from sky to color and just make this background like that. Okay, so on the right, I'm just going to use this default material. We've got two maps that we need to import, the normal map and the albedo map, also known as the diffuse. So I'm going to click on this and let's go find our bandana. Here we go. So I'm going to drag this on and you'll see that it looks extremely shiny right now. Uh, that's because of this gloss value over here. So if we just bring that down, uh, we'll get closer to uh, the type of material we're going for. But you guys can see that we've got our bandana in here and wherever we place those materials is where it's visible on our garment. But what's really going to make this look nice is that normal map. So I'm going to go ahead, load in that normal map. As soon as that loads in, now you can see we get this really nice uh, material texture, but I'm going to just drop that gloss value a little bit more. Well, it's depending on what type of material you're trying to uh, display over here. But as you can see, guys, we've got that normal map in. Uh, this is why I didn't want to sculpt these details on. I wanted to generate this type of detail with the normal map. And yeah, there we go, guys. We created UVs, separated this into two, and you can see that this is being textured according to where that seam was. And then this is separated at the top. And it's got that red texture. You can see we go right around. Uh, so what I probably would have done here, uh, because this is not perfect, uh, probably just adjust that texture map, try and get things to line up a little bit better. Uh, maybe even edit the UVs again and then uh, just make sure that certain parts like this are a little bit closer to the avatar. You can see the back here. It's not really tight against the face, uh, which is not correct. And But I've showed you my workflow for creating this. And you guys can import this garment into any program. So we can take it into Cinema 4D, 3D Max. Uh, we've created those UVs, created those textures, so they'll always be applied like this. So the normal map and that albedo uh, works very nice together. So I'm just going to put a turntable on. And just zoom in so you guys can see. And over here, here was that error I was talking about when we created that UV map. Uh, but we can see it's not bad. Uh, it does a decent job of doing this stuff. Uh, but if you just want to create garments and create some quick UVs and apply some texture on it, uh, this is how I would go about doing this. So I'd probably play around with these different lighting settings and uh, find something that I'm happy with. Uh, but yeah, that's it guys. Uh, I've showed you my workflow for creating garments in Marvelous Designer and then bringing that garment over to ZBrush to create quick UVs, taking it to 3D Max to adjust those UVs and then just texturing it quickly in Photoshop uh, to get something out like this. So I hope you guys have learned something useful from this. Maybe you can use it somewhere in your workflow if you're creating some high poly assets we're doing some concept work and you just want the asset to be fully textured like this so you can view it from multiple angles. Uh, so maybe if you're doing it for a client, you'll be able to show them that exact same garment from multiple angles, fully textured like this. So yeah, guys. And as always, 
Thank you for watching the tutorial. Stay tuned for some more tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.